Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. He sings, he dances, he does dramatic work. He does imitations, he plays the drums, he gets the girls. Watch out, here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. Step right up and take a peek at the longest career in show business, 91 years or so. Mickey Rooney's career spanned more than 300 films, but it wasn't all sunshine and stars. Why was Mickey Rooney like catnip for Hollywood's most beautiful women? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Mickey Rooney had one heck of a crazy life. Hot and cold affairs with numerous big-named women. Yes, problems with booze, absolutely. Gambling debts up the wazoo, that too. Reckless driving your publicist batty behaviour. When it comes to fast living, hard partying cred, today's celebrities can't hold a candle to the out-of-control behaviour of one of old Hollywood's all-time bad boys, Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney was a unique part of Hollywood history, one of a group of performers who started their careers in silent movies. Rooney saw it all from the beginning. From the precocious child star to stalwart partner of Judy Garland, then at 18 he almost caused a scandal by having an affair with superstar Norma Shearer, 20 years his senior, and at the height of her fame. He was the husband of Ava Gardner and seven other ladies. Top box office star in America for two years, TV star in the 1950s, honorary Oscar winner in 1983. There was a lot more to Mickey Rooney than light musicals and frothy comedies. He was a successful author, an accomplished musician and composer, a prolific inventor, and is an avid golfer and sportsman. He was a close friend to Charlie Chaplin, Errol Flynn and James Cagney. He returned to the stage in the 1960s and made some successful TV movies in the 80s. As well as his honorary Oscar, he was nominated twice for Best Actor Oscars and twice for Best Supporting Actor. With movie appearances stretching from 1926 to 2007, his was the longest career in cinema history. A Hollywood legend indeed. If you want to stay in show business as long as Mickey Rooney did, you have to hit that comeback trail early and prove yourself over and over again. He could sing, he could act, he could dance. He learned to play the banjo, scarily well, in a day. He played the drums like a pro. He was a champion ping-pong player. He composed a symphony, Melodante, which he performed on the piano at Frank Roosevelt's 1941 inauguration gala. Mickey was some kind of beautiful, talented monster. He was from the humblest beginnings. Mickey Rooney's name isn't actually, well, Mickey Rooney. The famous actor we all know today as Mickey Rooney was actually born Ninian Joseph Yule Jr. on September 23, 1920 in Brooklyn, New York. His parents were both successful vaudevillians and when he was two weeks old he was taken on tour and Rooney first appeared on stage at just 17 months old as part of his parents' vaudeville act. His parents divorced when he was three and his mother took him to Hollywood a year later to audition him for the Our Gang series headed by Al Roach. They were unsuccessful on that occasion but they returned two years later and this time young Joe was offered his first movie role as a cigar smoking midget in the film Not To Be Trusted. The part was small in every way but it opened a door in the world of Hollywood, a door that was never to close. Mickey Rooney attended Hollywood Professional School. During that time he made money as a paperboy. His next move came in 1926 when, at the age of six, he was cast in the role of the cocky, self-assured, tough little kid. He had the lead role in the first Mickey Maguire short film, Mickey Rooney changed his name to Mickey Rooney. In all, between 1926 and 1933, he made over 52 real film comedies in the series. From theatre to musicals to major films, Mickey Rooney established himself as a versatile actor. He became a juvenile star. The diminutive actor, standing 5 foot 2 inches, may not have been much in the looks department. In his 1991 memoir, Life is Too Short, Rooney admitted as much, writing, 
I was a gnomish prodigy, half human, half goblin, man-child, child-man, but the guy had something. Rooney, the highest paid actor and biggest male box office drawer in the world for three consecutive years, 1939, 1940 and 1941, was catnip for some of Hollywood's most beautiful women. He went through the ladies like a hot knife through fudge, said Ava Gardner. The newly named Mickey then played lead character as a boy roles such as in The World Changes in 1933 and Manhattan Melodrama with Myrna Loy in 1934, which was later made famous when notorious gangster John Dillinger was shot and killed while leaving the theatre where he had been watching it. His work in this film led to being signed to a long-term contract with MGM and he began landing bit parts in feature films. In 1935 he gave a much-praised performance of Puck in A Midsummer Night's Dream, which starred James Cagney, Dick Powell and Olivia de Havilland. Mickey Rooney rose to superstardom when he landed the role of Andy Harding in a series of successful films for MGM. With his diminutive stature and baby face, Rooney was able to portray the all-American teenager well into his twenties. One might question how much acting he was doing, however, as the hyperactive girl-crazy teenager wasn't exactly a stretch for Rooney. From the time that he was 18, Rooney had already developed a love for love. While on the set of 1938's Marie Antoinette, Rooney began spending a lot of time in the trailer of his co-star Norma Shearer, and they weren't running lines. As he was making all these MGM movies, Rooney was having the time of his life with some of the most beautiful women of the 20th century, and he was happy to kiss and tell, because that's part of the show. While he was dressed as Carmen Miranda for a gag in a movie, Rooney met a young Ava Gardner and started an all-out campaign to make her his wife and deflower her. The legendary beauty was Rooney's first of eight wives, Rooney once said that he tried to make up for being short by dating tall, beautiful women. The stereotypical Hollywood marriage, short and dramatic, all started with the comedic actor. Lana Turner, Elizabeth Taylor and Judy Garland were supposedly three of his many profile affairs. But if you've heard any rumours about a Mickey Rooney, Judy Garland love affair, rest assured, they're just rumours. Probably. Marriage number two in 1944 was to Betty Jane Baker, a backing singer for Elvis Presley and Frank Sinatra. The couple had two sons and were divorced in 1949. While his wife was pregnant with their second child, Rooney dealt her a devious act of betrayal. The actor met a young, very young, Elizabeth Taylor on the set of National Velvet and the two became close. Elizabeth Taylor was 14 when she and Rooney starred together in the film. His wife paid a visit to Rooney on set one day and walked in on him and a then 14-year-old Taylor who was on her knees in front of Rooney. Hint, she wasn't praying. He was one of Hollywood's most notorious yet unlikely womanizers. You may wonder what she saw in me. I don't know. I do know that on the dance floor I could make her breathless. This event was seminal to Rooney's life and career. It spelled the end of his career at MGM as this was the straw that broke Louis Mayer's back. He was fed up with Mickey, and after the war, Mickey had become passé. Both Betty Joan Phillips and Mickey Rooney bolted out of their marriage and into another one. Rooney married Martha Vickers in 1949, the same year he divorced Phillips. They had a son together before Vickers couldn't handle Rooney's drinking anymore. He was an iconic presence in movies, the poster boy for American youth in the idyllic small-town 1930s. At the peak of his career, Rooney was drafted into the US military during World War II. He served nearly two years entertaining over two million troops on stage and radio and was awarded a Bronze Star for performing in combat zones. After returning in 1945, Rooney failed to get prominence and reputation because audiences preferred the juvenile Rooney to the grown-up one. Having a career that spanned across the decades, Rooney had worked with Hollywood's finest. By the age of 35, he was on his fourth marriage, American actress Elaine Devery. They were married in 1952. Six years later, Devery, citing his gambling and infidelity, filed for divorce. 
Carolyn Mitchell, whom he married in 1958, came next. The two had three daughters and a son. Mitchell would be murdered in 1966 by a former lover. On the rebound, a distraught Rooney married Mitchell's close friend, Marge Lane. The marriage lasted exactly 100 days. A secretary, Carolyn Hockett, became wife seven in 1969. They adopted one son and had one daughter, but were divorced six years later. He married his eighth and last wife, singer Jan Chamberlain, in 1978. Over the years, Rooney was flip about his many marital failures. Always get married in the morning, he once said. That way, if it doesn't work out, you haven't wasted the whole day. Yet by World War II, Mickey Rooney had become frozen in time, a perpetual teenager in an ageing body. He was an anachronism by the time he hit his forties. His child star status haunted him as the gilded safety net of Hollywood fell away, and he was forced to find support anywhere he could, including affairs with beautiful women, multiple marriages, alcohol and drugs. As he got older, his career suffered from his juvenile appearance and his diminutive height. He wasn't a boy anymore and he wasn't a leading man, so where did he fit in? But he never gave up and he continued throughout decades of personal turmoil to do great work delivering incredible performances. He was let go by MGM and he started to make some low-budget noir movies. His strike up the band face became depressingly solemn as if he were a kid being punished. He tried television and gave a devilishly convincing performance in The Comedian for Playhouse 90, playing a successful comic who torments the people around him. From 1959 to 1979 I did very few movies I could be proud of. Most of them were crap, Rooney said. Unfortunately Rooney was convinced to appear in Yellowface as Mr. Uniyoshi in Breakfast at Tiffany's, and he went as hideously far as possible with the racial stereotype he was playing. Also, unfortunately, Breakfast at Tiffany's remained the best known and most shown movie on his almost endless resume, and it's a blot on his career. He performed in many low-budgeted movies during the 1950s and earned a reputation as a fine character actor in many roles. Throughout the 1960s, 70s and 80s, he portrayed many characters and made hundreds of appearances on TV, including dramas, variety programs and talk shows. Rooney struggled with drug and alcohol addictions. He was a compulsive gambler who once lost over $50,000 at the Riviera Casino in Las Vegas, much to the dismay of the mobsters who owned the establishment, and who had to file for bankruptcy twice. And then there were the women. Lots and lots of women. I lived like a rock star. I had all I ever wanted, from Lana Turner and Joan Crawford to every starlet in Hollywood, and then some. I screwed up my life. I pissed away millions. I was number one, the biggest star in the world. That's how Rooney summed up his life. He earned millions throughout his lifetime, but died nearly a pauper, with less than $20,000 in his estate. What happened to his fortune? I think that question is answered quite well here, though others may disagree. In 2011, Rooney filed elder abuse and fraud charges against stepson Christopher Aber and Aber's wife. At Rooney's request, the Superior Court issued a restraining order against the Abers, demanding they stay 100 yards from Rooney, as well as Mickey's other son, Mark Rooney, and Mark's wife, Charlene. Just prior, Rooney mustered the strength to break his silence and appeared before the Senate in Washington, D.C., telling of his own heartbreaking story of abuse in an effort to live a peaceful, full life and help others who may be similarly suffering in silence. Rooney requested through the Superior Court to permanently reside with his son Mark Rooney, who is a musician, and Mark's wife Charlene, an artist in the Hollywood Hills. He legally separated from his eighth wife in June of 2012. Ironically, after eight failed marriages, he never looked or felt better and finally found happiness and peace in the single life. Mickey, Mark and Charlene focused on health, happiness and creative endeavours and it showed. Mickey Rooney had once again landed on his feet, reminding us that he was a survivor. Rooney died on April 6, 2014. He was taking his afternoon nap and never woke. 
One week before his death, Mark and Charlene surprised him by reuniting him with a long-lost love. The Racetrack If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Mickey Rooney? There was no greater womaniser than he was then.